Jesus is coming again in brightness. He's coming again in glory. He's coming again, my friend, to take you home. He's coming again with the victor's crown as the triumphal Lord. Revelation 14, verse 15 tells us, I saw another angel come out of the temple crying with a loud voice to sit to him who sat on the cloud, thrust in your sickle. Notice this angel comes out of the temple. He comes iridescent with the glory of God. He comes from the presence of God and he says, thrust in your sickle for the time has come for you to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe. He comes, he descends and he comes to the reaping angel and he comes from the presence of God and this angel comes to the next angel and he says, the time is here. Go get my children, bring them home. God has given the divine pronouncement. It's time. My people are charmed by my love. My people are transformed by my power. My people are filled by my grace. My people have gone out to witness to this world. The world has been lit with the glory of God. It is time. Sin and suffering will be over. Disease and disaster and death will be over. Confusion and chaos and calamity will be over. Pestilence and poverty Will, and pollution will be over. It is time. Jesus tells the angel. The angel tells another angel. Did you see what it says here? Another angel came out of the temple from the presence of God. He cries with a loud voice to him who sits on the cloud, thrust in your sickle and reap. The time has come for you to reap. The harvest of the earth is ripe. Now, Revelation chapter 14 speaks about two harvests. The harvest of golden grain and the harvest of gory grapes. There is another harvest. The first harvest is the harvest of golden grain. The second harvest is the harvest of gory grapes. You see, every seed goes to harvest. Every seed. There is no middle ground. There is no neutrality. In the last days of earth's history, we will either see the fullest manifestation of the righteousness of God in the history of the universe or the fullest manifestation of the wicked evil of Satan in the history of the universe. When the last days of earth's histories come, we will see this earth lit with the, lightened with the glory of God and we will see the powers of God work in ways we've never seen before and we'll see the powers of hell work. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit from above in fullness of power, will call forth the spirits of demons from beneath. Every human being will make their final irrevocable decision to harvest golden grain or gory grapes. Another angel came out of the altar who had power over fire. See, the power over fire, what is that? It's the destructive fires that come from the divine presence of Christ when he descends from heaven on the cloud his righteous character destroys the wicked. His, his restraint has been withdrawn. His protection has been withdrawn. And in a sense, by their very choices, they destroy themselves in the presence of God. Revelation 14, 17 to 20 says, Thrust in your sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. So the angel thrust in his sickle, into the earth and he gathered the vine of the earth and threw it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. You see, the book of Revelation is a book of contrast. There is the Lamb of God, Christ, and the dragon, Satan. There is the seal of God, God's special sign, and there's the mark of the beast. There is New Jerusalem from above and Babylon from beneath. There are the spirits of Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the spirits of demons. In the book of Revelation, it's a book of contrast. And here in Revelation 14, we have the two harvests, golden grain, men and women sold out for God. You remember what Dwight L. Moody said, the world is yet to see that man, that woman who is totally committed to Christ I will be that man. I will be that woman, you say. The world is yet to see. A manifestation in a corporate whole of a group of people in the last days of earth's history who want nothing else but Jesus. They want nothing else but his love. There have been individuals who've made that choice down through the generations. 
But in the last days of earth's history, Jesus will say, here are they that keep the commandments of God and of the faith of Jesus. Here is a group of people who have Jesus' quality of faith in their lives. And his faith shines out from them and leads them to live godly, obedient lives. But here's another group of people who are possessed with the spirit of demons. Here's another group of people who are not possessed with the Holy Spirit. Every seed goes to harvest. And the Bible says blood came out of the wine press up to the horse bridles for 600 furlongs. What's that, 600 furlongs? What's that all about? Often when we talk about Bible prophecy, God gives it in relation to, to the nation of Israel. In the New Testament, spiritual Israel is God's church. And uh, what's this talking about, 600 furlongs? In the Bible, a furlong is about an eighth of a mile. 600 furlongs, 183 miles or thereabout. That's from the north of Israel to the south of Israel. So what is God saying? He is saying simply this wickedness will be totally destroyed. If you take Israel as a symbol of God's people, you can then say that the wickedness of this world will be totally, absolutely destroyed and God's people will ultimately, eventually, totally triumph. This scene is that every seed goes to harvest and God's people triumph and the seeds of wickedness or evil are totally destroyed. The book of Revelation describes once again the victory, the glorious victory of Jesus Christ and the victory of his people. The Christ that created the world with everlasting power will lead his people to triumph. The Jesus that triumphed over Satan on the cross, the Jesus that triumphed over Satan in his death will lead his people to everlasting triumph. The Christ that ascended to heaven, this Jesus, this same Jesus you saw go up into heaven, we read it in Acts chapter 1, this same Jesus is coming on the cloud. He is the Son of Man. He's coming with the cloud, with the crown of glory upon his head. Wickedness will be destroyed.